Avalanche. What is this blockchain network? What does its native token, AVAX, actually do? What are the potential risks and opportunities that investors need to keep in mind when looking to invest in this token? Well, let's answer these questions for you and explain it so simply that even your grandmama could get it and figure it out and go buy herself some damn AVAX. So given that AVAX is up 228% within the last 12 months, probably more by the time you watch this video, this might just be one of those cryptos that you want to have front and center on your radar. We're seeing a lot of hype and narrative build around this. But before we jump into talking about AVAX, breaking it all down for you, I just want you to note no one's paid us to make this video. The information in this video is provided to you for free for educational purposes. This video is also not a recommendation to either buy, sell, or hold AVAX. If you appreciate this kind of free, no BS information, then please go out and share this with your friends. I also do hold AVAX, currently staking it. For full portfolio disclosures on AVAX or any other coins that I own, see the link in the description on YouTube or the pinned comment on X. So what is Avalanche? Well, Avalanche is a proof of stake layer one blockchain. Avalanche is one of the most popular layer ones in the crypto ecosystem at this time. It is a major bear market survivor and came out strong, much like Ethereum and Binance, Smart Chain and Cardano and Solana and others. Similar to these other blockchains, Avalanche processes smart contracts. This means that developers can use Avalanche to build different decentralized applications or dApps on top of Avalanche, which provide services for a huge range of use cases across finance, gaming, NFTs, other industries. But what is it that separates Avalanche from the other major proof of stake blockchains? Because there's a lot of them out there, if we're being honest about it. Well, there are three very interesting aspects. There's Avalanche consensus mechanism, its three core blockchains, and its use of subnet technology, which is super fascinating. We're going to get to all that in just a few minutes. First, the consensus mechanism. Avalanche is a proof-of-stake blockchain, meaning that its validators must stake or deposit AVAX into the network. They have to take a certain amount of AVAX tokens and stake them in order to process transaction. They have to have their money on the line, quite literally, in order to have the privilege of securing the network. This is Avalanche's consensus mechanism or the way that the network validators reach agreement about the state of network transactions. However, the details of Avalanche's consensus mechanism are really what make it interesting and unique. You see, when a user submits a transaction, one of the validators receives it and then reaches out to a small but random subset of other validators looking for consensus. Those other validators, in turn, reach out to other small but, again, random subsets of validators once again looking for consensus for the transaction in question. This process continues until all the validators in the network have reached consensus on that particular transaction. Now, this process where Avalanche gets its name from is called Avalanche. And what's interesting is that this process is actually where Avalanche gets its name from. Did you know that? Similar to how a snowflake can become a snowball and a snowball can turn into an avalanche. A transaction on avalanche gets processed by one validator and then that small subset of validators and then eventually by the entire network. So it's thought that this technology is what actually gives avalanche its very high number of transactions per second or TPS as well as it's generally pretty low gas fees. Currently, Avalanche can process about 4,500 transactions per second with an average fee of just around $0.08. Cents. Compare this, of course, to Ethereum Layer 1's 15 transactions per second with an average fee of $1.50 just to transfer ETH, and that's on a good day for Ethereum with fees frequently hitting disgusting, eye-watering numbers and so crazy. Anyway, the center of Avalanche isn't one blockchain, but three, actually, this is very interesting. And these three blockchains are known as the exchange chain, where assets are exchanged, the contract 
blockchain, which actually processes smart contracts and different decentralized applications, and then the platform chain, which coordinates all the validators and all the subnets. Now, collectively, these three are known as Avalanche's primary network. These three blockchains work with each other in tandem to service the entire network for Avalanche. Avalanche's developers incorporated the three blockchains as the center of their technology because they believe that it helps to solve the classic blockchain trilemma problem, which is the idea that a single blockchain can only achieve two of the three following features. One, decentralization. Two, security. And three, scalability. Avalanche with their structure has solved that problem. Now let's discuss Avalanche subnets, very interesting technology. Subnets are third-party created blockchains that operate on top of the primary network. Third-party developers have a lot of independence here when it comes to creating their own subnets. The subnets can actually be public or private, which is very interesting. So we see lots of both of them coming out. Private institutions have taken a big interest, by the way. They can also operate their own set of rules, and they can use their own assets. Now, one rule that all subnets share is that subnet validators must also work as validators within Avalanche's primary network. Currently, there are about 30 different subnets operating on top of Avalanche, which is pretty damn cool. Many of these subnets specialize in finance or gaming or some kind of real-world asset exchange or other kind of applications as well. For example, we have two gaming ones. One is Beam, one is Shrapnel, one's a gaming ecosystem, whether it's just a single game. These gaming subnets allow those games and the games on Beam, for example, to scale massively without bloating the main chain or competing with each other for block space, which is pretty cool. At a high level, Avalanche subnets help the network to scale dramatically, and they increase utility as well for users. So it's fair to think of Avalanche subnets as similar to a layer two network built on top of Ethereum, because both of these actually help their networks grow. Okay, now, before we continue, I just want to interrupt the flow real quick to let you know about the best damn newsletter in the cryptocurrency industry, my newsletter. It's called Wealth mastery. Now, every single week, my team of writers and I spend about 40 hours a week putting this bad boy together in order to bring you the latest and best money making insights on airdrops, altcoin news, deep dives on altcoins, NFTs, altcoin technical analysis, the news. I know we also cover the news crazy for a newsletter. You can join our 100,000 plus weekly readers and sign up for free using the link down below in the description. Now let's turn it over to AVAX, the lifeblood of the network. AVAX is Avalanche's native token. Here are its use cases. Explain very simply. First, validators must stake AVAX to the network in order to validate transactions. Given that Avalanche is a proof of stake blockchain, of course, it's necessary. Second, AVAX is used to pay for network transaction fees. And third, AVAX serves as the primary medium of exchange within the Avalanche ecosystem. Now, regarding tokenomics, AVAX's max supply is actually capped at 750 million tokens. Now, a very, very, very important note here, AVAX actually has a burnt-in burn mechanism. Think of it like a stock buyback mechanism. Every time a transaction is made, a little bit is burned, meaning that the supply will continually decrease over time. Avalanche's initial coin offering occurred in July of 2020. During launch, 50% of AVAX's max supply, or 360 million tokens, were sold out to the public and different private parties and reserved for the team, the Avalanche Foundation, and to other different partners and incentive programs and stuff like that. Now, some of this initial 50% is still locked away and is slowly being released in stages via a vesting schedule with the full 50% of these tokens to be fully unlocked by 2030. Now, the other half, the other 50% of tokens, that's actually reserved for staking rewards. This means that AVAX is currently an inflationary token until all of the tokens actually end up getting released, which will likely be several decades from now. AVAX's current inflation rate is around 16%, which is quite high, but it's a new network, so that's kind of standard to see. There are currently 377 million AVAX tokens in circulation. Now, what about key adoption statistics? Well, first is active addresses or the number of addresses 
that are interacting with the network at any given period of time. During the 2021 crypto bull run, there were about 100,000 active addresses on the network. Currently, there are about 130,000 active addresses. So Avalanche has seen about a 30% growth in this particular metric since late 2021, and they'll probably accelerate dramatically during this bull market. Then there's the transaction count. This measures how many transactions are actually occurring during any given period of time on the blockchain during the 2021 bull run. Again, Avalanche's transaction count was around 1 million. Today, that number is around 1.5 million, so 50% growth. Now, let's compare these percentages to Ethereum. So Ethereum's active addresses during the 2021 bull run were 500,000. Today, they're around 450 thousand, so about a 10% drop. And we're seeing the same trend with Ethereum daily transactions. During the last bull run, there are about 1.2 million daily transactions on Ethereum. And now there's around 1.1 million. Again, a 10% decrease. Now, very important, we do need to be careful with this kind of comparison because Ethereum's numbers do not fully reflect reality because they don't include the larger Layer 2 network, which is taking off in a massive way. Many users have gravitated to Layer 2s, Arbitrum, Optimism, StarkNet, all that kind of stuff to escape Ethereum's very silly fees. However, using an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, Avalanche, as we can see, is growing more on a percentage basis compared to the Ethereum main chain. Now, one last metric that we should look at is the total value of funds locked on chain. Now, this particular metric measures just how much money has actually been deposited into the network for decentralized uh, finance applications. So Avalanche had a total value locked about $9.5 billion during the last bull run. Today, that number is a bit over $1 billion. Now, Look at Ethereum. Its TVL was around 80 billion during the last bull run. Now it's around 57 billion. Now, the key comparison to look at is how aggressively Ethereum's TVL has rebounded in 2024, whereas Avalanche has largely remained a bit flat so far. We are starting to see a little pickup in that TVL. So there's something to be aware of there, but still, food for thought. Now, let's finish with risks and opportunities. Now, the major risk, obviously, with Avalanche is that, well, it's going to be unable to compete against Ethereum and really uh, Ethereum's burgeoning layer two network ecosystem. Why not just use Arbitrum, for example, or even other competitor chains like Solana? Why not just use Solana? Ethereum does have significantly higher fees, of course, than Avalanche on layer one, but its layer twos have alleviated much of this pressure with the Denkun upgrade, where they now cost fractions of a penny to use on average, or just a couple pennies. So that big upgrade, which has just happened, and of course we have sharding coming, which will make the main chain more scalable in the not-so-distant future, all should reduce gas fees even more. Therefore, the major risk is that, well, Ethereum continues to dominate the smart contract space despite its current high fees, and that will happen to the detriment of other smart contract layer ones, including Avalanche. It can find its own niche within that, within Ethereum's world, but it may not overtake it. The big opportunity, though, with Avalanche is that it's a much higher asymmetric bet to the upside compared to Ethereum and really even a lot of the other major layer ones right now. The total market caps for Ethereum, Binance, Smart Chain, Solana, Cardano, Avalanche, respectively, are 481 billion, 78 billion, 67 billion, 26 billion, and 18 billion at the time of recording this video. Given all these networks fundamentally provide pretty damn similar services, Avalanche likely provides the highest potential upside on a percentage basis compared to the others, given it has the smallest market cap out of the top dog major blockchain networks. Thanks for watching.